Well, good morning and welcome to our service of Holy Communion. This week we find ourselves in Fair Trade Fortnight, and it reminds us of the call to be good news to the poor and the oppressed, and of the commandment to love our neighbour as ourselves. Although many organisations are now beginning to respond to calls to trade fairly and ethically, there's still much work to be done. And today, as we engage with uh, liturgy around fair trade and the environment, it gives us a chance to think a little bit more about how we should respond as Christians. And together, we'll make a promise and commitment to respond to God's call, speaking out for those who need a voice and longing for people to be treated fairly as each one of us is made equally in the image of God. And so let's begin with a moment of quiet as we remember whose people we are and ask him to be with us as we're gathered here today. We come from scattered lives to meet with God. Let us recognize his presence with us. As God's people, we have gathered. Let us worship together. And we continue in worship as we come to our first song, The Lord's My Shepherd. The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me lie in pastures green. He leads me by the still, still waters. His goodness restores my soul. And I will trust in you. Trust in you alone for your endless mercy follows me, your goodness will lead me home. He guides my ways in righteousness and he Follows me, 
Let us pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. From the earliest days, God established a covenant relationship with his creation, calling his people to holiness, bearing witness to his steadfast love, finding delight in serving him. Let us then seek God's forgiveness for ways in which we have denied his claim upon us. We pray together. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. May God, who loved the world so much that he sent his Son to be our Saviour, forgive us our sins, and make us holy to serve him in the world. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, by the prayer and discipline of Lent, may we enter into the mystery of Christ's sufferings, and by following in his way, come to share in his glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first reading today is taken from Micah chapter 6, verses 6 to 8. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow down before the exalted God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, 10,000 rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has shown you, O man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you but to act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God? Our second hymn this morning is There is a Redeemer. There is a Redeemer, Jesus God's own Son, precious Lamb of God, Messiah. i 
Gospel reading today is taken from Matthew chapter 5, verses 43 to 48. Jesus said, You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbour and hate your enemy. But I say to you, Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be children of your Father in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the righteous and on the unrighteous. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet only your brothers and sisters, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? Be perfect, therefore as your heavenly Father is perfect. If you hear the word fair trade, it's quite likely that thoughts of bananas, coffee and chocolates aren't far behind it. But of course, these are just some of the products that come out of the fair trade movement. The real heart of fair trade is the people. The farmers and workers who grow and sell the products, over 1.6 million farmers and workers across 74 countries. As we've heard from Jonathan, um, this Sunday we are celebrating Fair Trade Fortnight. And this is a good time to think about the people behind the products and why we support fair trade in our churches. This year, Fair Trade Fortnight is especially highlighting the growing challenges that climate change is bringing to the farmers they work with. In some ways, the passage from Matthew's Gospel might seem like a strange choice for Fair Trade Fortnight Sunday. It contains a message of love your enemies. And you might wonder, what has that got to do with fair trade? Well, for me, these words are a reminder of just how great the scope of God's call to love really is. It is not enough to be concerned only for those who are like us or who like us. We must pray and act for those who are outside our group, even if they do us harm. 
This is a call to radical love, the sort of love that human willpower alone cannot explain or sustain. This love is the love that only comes from God and only works through us by the Holy Spirit. So what has this radical God love got to do with fair trade? Well, if God calls us to love even our enemies, what's our excuse for not loving those who have never done us any harm? And not only never done us harm, but are actually harmed by some of the ways that we in more privileged lifestyles live. The COVID-19 pandemic has in many ways made us more aware of love for our neighbours. And there have been some fantastic and awe-inspiring examples of people looking out for others and doing their part for their local communities. But in the midst of the lockdowns and news headlines dominated by national pandemic statistics, it's easy to lose sight of those who are in dire need every day, and especially those who are not on our own doorsteps. The pandemic has caused tragedy for many, but the global threat of climate change will be ongoing long after the pandemic is controlled and we are back to some kind of normal. And the effects of climate change are seen disproportionately in the poorest and most exploited parts of the world. The farmers that Fairtrade work with have seen their crops of coffee, cocoa, honey and vegetables in Honduras, Guatemala and Nicaragua be completely devastated by the changing weather patterns and other fa factors related to the changing climate. The farmers have told Fairtrade that climate change is their biggest threat and challenge. So what can we do? What are we doing? At the last Deanery Synod Zoom meeting a couple of weeks ago, we as churches in this deanery voted to support the Climate and Ecological Economy Bill, which would commit the UK to shifting to net zero carbon emissions before the current 2050 target. It became very clear even from one conversation at Deanery Synod, that this kind of reform will not be without its challenges and will inevitably mean significant changes to the way that we live. But as well as these big changes, there are smaller everyday ones that we can make. We can choose to support fair trade farmers by our shopping choices. And do check out the resources and stories on the Fairtrade Fortnite website. We can make our voices heard by signing Climate Coalition's declaration. And a link to this is also on the Fairtrade Fortnite website. We can write to our local MPs. We can write to James Heapy, who is the MP for the Wells constituency, to show our support for the Climate and Ecological Economy Bill. With this season of Lent comes a certain level of introspection, time set aside for contemplation, time to assess our spiritual health and where we're at with God. This is good. But when we spend time with our creator and we really listen to his voice, I'm pretty sure that he won't be leaving us having a good old navel gaze God's message of radical love compels us to look outwards. The words from Micah chapter 6 show us where God's heart lies. Not in token offerings to him, or even really generous ones, but in justice, mercy and humility shown in our interactions with others and with God. As the Good News version puts it, the Lord has told us what is good. What he requires of us is this, to do what is just, to show constant love 
and to live in humble fellowship with our God. And this call to justice, mercy and humility is found in its truest form in showing the radical love of God to others. And especially others who are not top on our love list. One way that we can all demonstrate this outward looking love is to pray in God's kingdom on earth. We can pray for fair trade farmers and workers and other organisations that we support. Each of us can ask for more of that radical God love. And when we ask, let's ask it not just for those immediately around us, not just for those we like or who are like us, but let's be radical and look further still. We're going to ask God to help us with this in the words of the song we'll hear now, God the Maker of the Heavens. And so let's join together and declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, 
Amen. Well, we now have an opportunity, as I explained at the beginning of the service, to join together if we'd like to and make a covenant and commitment to respond to God's call, to live missionally, taking into consideration all of those things around issues of justice and environment that we've been thinking about. And so if you'd like to join with me in this, then you have an opportunity to join in after the introduction. Sisters and brothers, God calls us to action on behalf of the poor. Let us then make a covenant with each other and with God to respond to his call in everything we do and wherever Christ leads us. To take up this covenant means that we are content that Christ directs us and that Christ alone is our reward. Christ calls us to fairness and justice in many different ways. Some are easy and require little effort or personal sacrifice, but others are difficult and will mean us having to change what we buy and where we shop and to go without ourselves. Some ways will bring us praise from those around us and win us admiration, but others may bring criticism and make us unpopular. When we raise our voice for the voiceless, when we call for justice for the poor. Some ways we'll find interesting and absorbing and we'll play to our natural strengths, but others we will find tedious and a chore. In some of these ways, we may please both Christ and ourselves. In others, we cannot please Christ except by denying ourselves. Yet we know that we have the power to be able to act in all these ways because Christ inspires and strengthens us and because we know that he has no hands or feet on earth but ours. If justice is to be done, it is we who are called to do it. Therefore, let us make this covenant with God our own, giving ourselves anew and relying on his promises and his grace. Loving Lord, since you have called us through Christ to share in this covenant, we will take on this duty with joy. For whatever we do for the least of our brothers and sisters, we do it for you. We are no longer our own, but yours. If you're willing to stand with me and join in to this covenant, then let's say these words together. I am no longer my own, but yours. Call me and open my eyes to the injustice around me the unfairness around me, and the poverty around me. Call me to dare to change my lifestyle, my habits, and my outlook for you. Call me to strive for fairness and justice in everything I do, not just in words, but in actions, not just locally, but globally. Let me change myself for you, and so change the world for you. I freely and wholeheartedly commit myself to this duty, knowing that in everything you will give me your inspiration, strength and grace. Glorious and blessed God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, you are mine and I am yours. So be it. Let this covenant now made on earth be fulfilled in heaven. Amen. We do not enter into this covenant for our own sakes, but as servants and witnesses to God in the world. And so let us pray for the church and for the world. In this Fair Trade Fortnight service, we're going to use prayers adapted from some published by the Fair Trade Foundation. Creator God, we look around our world particularly during this last year of intermittent lockdown, with the reduced traffic and noise, we have been able to see more clearly the beauty of your creation if we just open our eyes. And through the wonders of digital technology, we can see the wonders far from us too, and the ecosystems living in it. Thank you. And yet we are also the ones who have caused chaos and harm to these beautiful places to flora and fauna within them. Give us eyes 
that see beyond the beauty of your creation. You have given us enough land to feed our populations, and yet many go hungry. You have given us wealth, yet we are often slow to share. You have given us the ability to look outwards and to see where others need help. But often we only look at our own lives. Forgive us, Lord, when we do not open our eyes and when, as a parent, we make your heart sad at our selfish nature. Touch our eyes afresh today and enable us to see what you have created. Help us to nurture and care for all that lives on this beautiful planet that we call home. Help us to seek always for justice and fairness for places and people and to make this world a better place. Father, we pray for farmers and producers across the world who are living with the ravages and fear of climate change threatening their livelihoods and income. We pray for families and children who see their crops fail because of storms, floods and drought, and who live from day to day not knowing where their next meal will come from. We pray for world leaders and scientists, having seen how politicians are able to respond to emergencies like COVID-19 with substantial funding and support. We pray that they will also respond to the climate emergency with the same level of speed, commitment and investment to enable countries to recover from the pandemic sustainably, cleanly and fairly. We pray for organisations working in poor communities to find and promote new ways of farming to protect the environment and to enable the sustainable development of community life. And we pray for ourselves that our commitment to justice may bear fruit in our lives, in the choices we make and in the priorities that we set ourselves. We pray for the fair trade movement, for all who campaign and spread the message. May our love for each other and for your creation deepen our commitment and determination so that our voices will be heard more loudly and their impact increase. Lord, may we do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. We ask these things in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body on the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. If you're with others this morning, you might now just like to take a moment to share peace with them. And if you're not, then to pray a prayer of God's peace over those that you know and love. Our next hymn this morning is Here is Love Vast as the Ocean.
this bread that we bring, we shall remember Jesus. With this wine that we bring, we shall remember Jesus. Bread for his body, wine for his blood, gifts from God to his table we bring, we shall remember Jesus. The Lord is here, his spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Almighty God, good Father to us all, your face is turned towards your world. In love you gave us Jesus your Son to rescue us from sin and death. Your word goes out to call us home to the city where angels sing your praise. We join with them in heaven's song. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Father of all, we give you thanks for every gift that comes from heaven. To the darkness, Jesus came as your light. With signs of faith and words of hope, he touched untouchables with love and washed the guilty clean. This is his story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. The crowds came out to see your son, yet at the end they turned on him. On the night he was betrayed, he came to table with his friends to celebrate the freedom of your people. This is his story. This is our song, Hosanna in the highest. Jesus blessed you, Father, for the food. He took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and said, This is my body given for you all. Jesus then gave thanks for the wine. He took the cup, gave it, and said, This is my blood shed for you all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. This is our story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we celebrate the cross on which he died to set us free. Defying death, he rose again and is alive with you to plead for us and all the world. This is our story. This is our song, Hosanna in the highest. Send your spirit on us now that by these gifts we may feed on Christ with opened eyes and hearts on fire. May we and all who share this food offer ourselves to live for you and be welcomed at your feast in heaven where all creation worships you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. 
Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. And so we pray together. God, you are everything to us, giving us life, filling us with love, and setting us free from sin that we might live in you. Accept the work of our hands this day. Take our lives, give us your peace, and renew us in the service of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our final hymn today is How Great Thou Art. O oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the works thy hand hath made, I see the stars. I hear the mighty thunder, thy path throughout the universe display. Then sings my soul.
So may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with each one of you and with all those you love and pray for, now and always. Amen. We go into the world to walk in God's light, to rejoice in God's love, and to reflect God's glory. Amen. Amen.